Now, this past week, I made a very quick trip to Israel for three days, just for a couple of speeches and some media appearances and meetings. Now, while there, I visited the excavations at the city of David in Jerusalem, most of which are not even open to the public. Deep underneath the modern city are the ruins of ancient Jerusalem as it existed 2,000 years ago during the time of Jesus, but which has been buried for 20 centuries since the Romans sacked it and burned it totally to the ground in 70 AD. While visiting in an area not yet open to the public, my longtime friend from the excavation team placed a small mark of soot on my hand that is part of what was uncovered from the destruction of the temple and the city of Jerusalem in the first century. Now to touch the physical residue of what some consider to be the end of the Jewish people would have been sobering, except that, well, I felt quite the opposite because I had in my hand the ash from what was to have been the end of the Jewish people and the nation of Israel. Indeed, they were dispersed throughout the world hunted down, mercilessly murdered in the Holocaust, and removed from the very land that God gave them through Abraham over 3,500 years ago. But that was not the end of their story. Those ashes can now become the mark of God's ultimate fulfillment of His promise that He will restore His people and His land. Well, this summer, exactly, exactly 50 years ago, 1973 was my first trip to Israel. I made it as a teenager in 73. Since 1981, I've taken groups on a spiritual pilgrimage to the land of the Bible. And in fact, we'll take groups there both in February and May of next year. But while many people believe that God had failed the Jews and allowed them to wander the planet and almost become extinct because of the Holocaust, it was anything but the last chapter of God's story or His promises to His chosen people. I'll be honest, there are days I fear that America has been reduced to ashes. Not physical ashes or being burned to the ground, but the spiritual ashes of a nation that has forgotten and forsaken God, and where evil is called good and good is called evil. Where political leaders claim they don't know what a woman is, despite claiming to be all for the very women they can't even identify. Weird. It's a time in which government criminally prosecutes those who dare disagree with its politics or speak views that challenge the authority of government or those in power. But the ashes on my hand reminded me that God and not man determines if the next chapter of our history is our last. As surely as God returned Jews to their ancient and indigenous homeland, so I'm confident that God can and will return America to its greatness, but only if we, its people, will humble ourselves, pray, seek His face, and turn from our wicked ways. Look, I believe in voting and civic engagement. Totally think it's important. But our real problems in America aren't political, they're spiritual. And if we continue on a course of rebellion, worshiping the created rather than the Creator, and conduct violence toward one another, we may be reduced permanently to ashes. But if we're willing to end the evil pride that marks us and begin to humble ourselves before God, the ashes of our culture can become the springboard of our renewal and our revival. I hope America is never reduced to just the burning of ashes. But I will say this, if we are, I also hope that someday in the future, that those ashes will arise a remnant who remember God, believe His truth, and will rebuild on the principles of liberty and love for one another so that America's comeback is as real and as strong as the Jews. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, I hope you will now. The button is just below this video, and there's a little bell next to it. If you click on those, YouTube will reluctantly start letting you know when we've got a new video uploaded.